More markers means more accuracy because bigger is always better, right? I mean, I'm from Texas and that's what they tell me. Well, in the words of Obi-Wan Kenobi, yes, from a certain point of view. Howdy, I'm Andy Lee with Family History Fanatics, and this is a segment of DNA. Be sure to subscribe to our channel, and make sure you click on the bell if you would like to be notified about new episodes. In lots of areas of life, we are told that bigger is better, but when it comes to DNA testing, do more markers really matter? Now, before we answer this question, we need to break it up into two different types of tests, because the answer is different for each one. First, we have the STIR test, and this is used for Y-DNA testing. Now, Family Tree DNA is the only company that offers the Y-DNA test, and they have 37 markers, 67 markers, and 111 markers, and you can buy any one of those tests. Now, each one of those tests is progressively more expensive and more accurate in identifying how closely related you are to another person. However, there is a caveat. Your data is being compared to other people's data. And so the accuracy is going to reflect the least accurate test between any two people. So let's say that you match with John on a 37 marker test at a genetic distance of zero, which indicates a potential close relative. So you get excited and you take the 67 marker test, except that John hasn't. So even after you take the 67 marker test, all it's gonna show you is that you still match John on 37 markers at a genetic distance of zero. So in this case, more markers is better as long as you both have more markers. Now, Family Tree DNA allows you to upgrade your Y-DNA test after you've taken it. So you don't have to get a new test. All you have to do is pay the upgrade fee to go from a 37 marker to a 67 marker or a 67 marker to a 111 marker test. So if you have a specific patrilineal genealogy question, I would recommend that you take the 37 marker test. After taking the test, if you have some people that you have a genetic distance of zero with, contact those people and find out whether or not they've taken or if they'd be willing to take a 67 marker test before you pay the money to have that 67 marker test done. This way, you can potentially avoid some disappointment. While we're talking about Y-DNA and mitochondrial DNA, a SNP test that is done in conjunction with the autosomal test can help to identify your haplogroup. In this case, more is always better. Haplogroups are defined by the different mutations in the Y chromosome and mitochondrial DNA. And so the more locations along that Y chromosome or mitochondrial DNA that you map, the more accurate your haplogroup is going to be. Sequencing the entire Y chromosome or mitochondrial DNA will give the most accurate haplogroup. Family Tree DNA's big Y test tests about 20 times as many SNPs as most of the other tests that even test some of the Y chromosome. And because of that, Family Tree DNA has been finding more and more haplogroups and subgroups from these because of all the different mutations that they're seeing on all these other SNPs. When it comes to haplogroups, bigger is always better. So the next thing is our SNP tests, our autosomal tests. Now let me emphasize SNPs are not the same as STIRS. They aren't even comparable. Now, based on the ISOG autosomal SNP chart, the least amount of SNPs that any of the commercial tests take is about 500,000. While 500,000 is 4,500 times larger than the 111 marker Y-DNA STIR test, it doesn't mean that there's 4,500 times more information. They're looking at different things. It really is an apples and orange comparison. Autosomal tests can be used for different things. One that most everyone is familiar with is ethnicity or heritage results. For these estimates, all the SNPs are actually divided up into small strings, and each of those strings is compared to a reference population. Now, at first glance, 
Having more SNFs sounds like it would make for a more accurate determination of your ethnicity. However, it's not just your DNA, but the DNA of the reference population that also needs to be considered. And in a lot of cases, these populations were not tested with the idea of genealogy in mind, and so all of the markers are not the same. For instance, you may have a test with the 23andMe version 3 chip, which had 900,000 markers, but if the reference database that you're comparing it to has on average only 600,000 of those markers, then the other 300,000 are really useless for determining your heritage. So like with YDNA, when you're comparing, it matters not just how many markers your test had, but it also matters how many markers the reference population had. And unfortunately, you can't call up the reference population and have them take another test. So the next thing that autosomal testing can do is cousin matching. And this is my favorite part about DNA. Now, like heritage estimates, on the surface it appears that more markers would be better because that's more information to compare it to. But it's actually the intersection of the markers that you have with the markers of the person that you're comparing it to. Now, seeing this ISOG chart, this may be as few as 100,000 markers, or it may be as much as 600,000 markers. But does this difference change the accuracy of determining which people are your potential cousins? Simply put, not for any practical purposes. MyHeritage allows upload of 23andMe version 5 data and living DNA data, which uses a chip that is much different than the other chips and shares the least amount of SNPs in common with them. I've uploaded not just my 23andMe data, but also from all of the different companies' data, including Living DNA, to MyHeritage, and I've compared the match results of each one of those same people, me. It turns out there really isn't any difference. They may report slight differences in the amount of shared DNA, but the list of potential cousins, particularly the list of close potential cousins, is the exact same. So when it comes to cousin matching, more SNPs don't necessarily mean better or more accurate results. Which makes sense, because if you delve into each of the companies on their algorithms that they use, they all use some threshold of the number of matching SNPs as well as the amount of centimorgans a certain segment is to call it a matching segment. So more is better sometimes, but you need a check to see if it's worth spending that extra money to get the more information. For a lot of genealogy questions, any one of the genealogy databases will work for your DNA needs. Now, if you have any questions, put it in the comments below and I'll try to answer it. Be sure to give us a thumbs up and share this video with your friends if you enjoyed it.